An evacuation order remains in effect for North Coast Ridge Road. Firefighters saw some spot fires flare up there over the weekend. They say none have popped up today. In Sacramento County, two grass fires kept firefighters busy this afternoon. Those fires broke out along 24th and Q Streets in Rio Linda. The flames charred only about two acres, just grass and trees burned, and no homes or buildings were threatened. The cause of this fire under investigation. Let's turn to KCRA 3 weather, a familiar sight maybe for many of you. Drivers coming back. This is the Yolo Causeway as many people return from the long holiday weekend. Well, at least they came back to some great weather. There is a silver lining in this. Yeah, absolutely. It was fantastic out there again today. So with more on what the short work week holds for us, let's check in with meteorologist Eileen Jabora. Well, it holds some heat. You know, this uh, today, Labor Day, a lot of folks think of it as the unofficial end to summer and maybe some fall like feel to the air will come our way like it did this weekend. Uh, uh, things are going to be changing. Temperatures this weekend were so comfortable. Saturday only making it to 85 in Sacramento. Yesterday, 83 and there were a lot of spots in the valley yesterday that only got to near 80 degrees. Well, today we jumped up to 91 and get used to the 90s. I think 91 will be one of the cooler days this week. Some more of that heat building in could soar those temperatures up, maybe even close to 100. We'll show you what the warmest day will likely be this week coming up later on. Back to you. All right, Eileen, an investigation is underway in South Lake Tahoe tonight after a plane crash at the airport. This happened around 1:30 this afternoon. You can see in these pictures the small plane upside down in a field. Fire officials say two people were aboard. One was taken to the hospital. Stockton police are trying to determine what caused a drive by shooting that killed one teen and injured another. Rather, who was responsible? It happened yesterday afternoon on the Conway Homes community near Dallas and Connecticut Avenues. That's west of I-5. KCRA 3's Linda Muma explains the plea from police tonight. Stockton police are now patrolling the neighborhood where a memorial candle in blue paint left behind by a police investigation now mark the area where a 16 year old boy was killed in a drive by shooting. But I heard about it yesterday and it was kind of devastating to me, you know, just knowing that these young kids nowadays that the way they're doing things, it's not the way to go, you know. People in Stockton say they're seeing these images too often. And now in the Conway Homes neighborhood, just north of the Van Buskirk Municipal Golf Course. I actually grew up in the area and I used to work over at Marshall Elementary School and it's happened before while I was working too. So it's horrible that it happens often. It's very dangerous. There's a lot of young kids there. Kids police believe may have seen or heard the gunshot Sunday afternoon when the two 16 year old boys were struck. One was taken to a hospital with non life threatening injuries. The other later died. It's just kind of scary because I have kids of my own. I have teenagers. I have, you know, 20 year olds and stuff like that. And I just thank God that I've been able to raise them right. You know what I'm saying? Right now, Stockton police don't have a motive or any suspect information. And while some people in the neighborhood didn't want to talk with us, about what happened, others at this community event in downtown Stockton did, offering what they believe needs to happen in order for the violence to stop. I think that there needs to be a lot more positive activities for young kids to get involved with after school hours, after school programs, sports programs, dance, music, anything that's positive that'll keep the kids in a good place. A place they say that keeps them out of trouble and off the streets. In Stockton, Linda Muma, KCRA 3 News. As Stockton police are trying to figure out if the shooting was gang related. They are urging witnesses to call them and say that they can. Those witnesses remain anonymous. The Solano County Sheriff's Office has arrested a suspect in a murder from just over a year ago. Deputies arrested 26 year old Isaiah McLean of Vallejo on charges of murder. Investigators say in August of last year, he fatally shot 21 year old Atira Westbrook as she left her home. Investigators now looking for this man, 38 year old Richard Hill as the possible getaway driver. Hill, who also goes by the street name Perv, is considered armed and dangerous. Anyone with information is urged to call the Solano County Sheriff's Office. Office. And Sacramento police are looking for the suspect in a hit and run crash that sent a woman to the hospital with serious injuries. It happened yesterday on business 80 in El Camino, uh, El Camino Avenue. Police say the driver of a gold or beige Buick sideswiped a Toyota causing the car to crash and then a woman was thrown from that vehicle. The driver took off. Investigators say they do have the license plate information from the Buick and are now looking for the owner. 
Trouble for the San Francisco 49ers. The team has cut a player who's been charged with a brutal attack. Tight end Bruce Miller was arrested this morning. He's accused of beating up two men at a San Francisco hotel. Elisa Gonzalez has more. Just hours before the alleged assault, 49ers fullback Bruce Miller posted an Instagram photo from the Palm House Bar in the Cow Hollow District. Sundays are for the boys, he wrote. A restaurant worker told KTVU the 29-year-old came into the bar with his buddies three separate times that night and was, quote, hammered. He was like kind of wasted. <laughs> I would say, yeah, really intoxicated. Fast forward to 3 o'clock this morning. This is surveillance video from the travel lodge on Columbus, where clerk Dinesh Streshta says Miller sat on some steps and threw up. He had a cut somewhere in the head, and there was a little bit of blood over in the face. Police say Miller had tried to get a room across the street at the Fisherman's Wharf Marriott about 15 minutes earlier, but it was full. When he tried to enter a room belonging to a 70-year-old man, the man's 29-year-old son in an adjoining room told Miller he had the wrong room. Miller allegedly charged at the son, and when the father came to his defense, officers say Miller punched him out cold, breaking bones in his face. That's when Miller ran to the travel lodge. It's already 14 for the Marriott. It's Bruce Miller. He was throwing up and he was bleeding, so I thought it's better to call 911 and get a medical help for him. Because of the clerk's phone call, police were able to track down Miller. Now, the clerk says he had no idea that Miller was a famous football player. He simply knew that he needed help, so he called 911. Meanwhile, fan reaction has been swift. He, he had a chance and he blew it. And what, what was he thinking before he did that? So it's kind of. It makes the organization look real bad. They need to be setting an example, and if you can't set a positive example, it's time to go. Find something else to do. The 49ers agreed. Miller was released from the team today. Surveillance video also shows him in handcuffs being questioned by emergency crews. He did suffer minor injuries and was treated at the hospital, but the damage to his reputation and career will take much longer to heal. That's Tara Moriarty reporting, and according to jail records, Miller's been charged with assault with a deadly weapon, two counts of making criminal threats and battery. It's not the first time he's been in trouble with the law. Last year, Miller pleaded no contest to a misdemeanor charge of disturbing the peace. He was accused of smashing his fiancée's cell phone during an argument. Colin Kaepernick's decision to take a knee during the national anthem continues to get support and some criticism. Today, President Obama says he backs the 49ers quarterback and his right to protest. Other athletes have joined Kaepernick's anthem protest. U.S. soccer star and former Elk Grove United player Megan Rapino. She knelt during the anthem before last night's game between the Seattle Reign and Chicago Red Stars. Rapino says it was the least she can do to keep that conversation going about racial injustice and minority oppression. Some dramatic and disturbing billboards are turning heads in the Bay Area. The billboard reads, End Rape on the Night Shift. It's a bill on Governor Brown's desk aimed at protecting immigrant women who are janitors, who they say, who uh, experts say face an epidemic of rape and sexual abuse at work. The signs are on I-80 near Oakland and the Bay Bridge. Governor Brown has until September 30th to sign that bill. And caught on camera, a woman setting a car on fire. Why police say this act of arson was a mistake in more way than more than one way. Tools targeted the warning in El Dorado County and what workers need to do to protect their belongings. Plus, we're tracking two storms that are impacting both coasts tonight, where Hermine and Newton are tonight and the damage they could do. A woman in Florida facing arson charges after she was caught on camera trying to set her ex-boyfriend's car on fire. Problem for her was she had the wrong car. Take a look here. Police say this is 19-year-old Carmen Shambly, and you can see her feeding the flames inside the trunk of this white car. Police say Shambly thought the car belonged to her former boyfriend. Oops. Lock up your tools. That's the warning from El Dorado County authorities after one community is hit over and over by thieves. And crime was low, but now it's just it's picking up. This is happening near Cambridge Drive and Knollwood Drive in Cameron Park. And KCRA3's Kathy Park tells us about the warning from the sheriff's office and the steps to take right now to keep from becoming the next victim. 
Expensive tools, jacks, uh, wrenches, sometimes parts. Yeah. Most people have those items tucked away in a toolbox on the back of trucks, like in this photo. But what's unusual about this Facebook picture is that it comes with a warning from the El Dorado County Sheriff's Office. They took, took everything out of it. I mean, they aimed it. Stephen LaMontagne, yeah, who lives cool. in the Cambridge Gardens apartment complex in Cameron Park, says in the last few weeks, thieves have made off with tools and other valuables, all found in cars and trucks parked outside. One of my neighbor's cars, they break into every other weekend. He says it's happening in the middle of the night or early morning. It's picked up more probably in the last year. And when you do the math, these pricey parts now gone missing add up to big bucks. 300 bucks up to 1,000. I mean, it just depends on the tools and the brands and everything. To keep this from happening to you, the sheriff's office recommends that you put some sort of personal identification number, like the one found on your driver's license, directly onto your tools. It's one way to track them back to the owner. Steven not only wants his stuff returned, but the suspects caught. I'm originally from the Bay Area. So the crime was a lot more from where I'm originally from, and I came up here to get away from all that. Meantime, neighbors are tightening up security, so nothing disappears again. Either keep them close by or lock it up. In Cameron Park, Kathy Park, KCRA 3 News.